It's a dangerous drug behind a recent spike in overdoses. It can be a hundred times more potent than morphine. Tonight, a big amount of it is off the streets of Lexington after police make a record bust. They were trailblazers at the University of Kentucky and the SEC. Tonight, a tribute, a gridiron gang that made football history. It was, you know, something that was very special and dear to me. And paying it back, find out the reason why this former UK great is back in Lexington tonight. This is WKYT News at 11. Good evening. It is almost midnight. Thanks for staying up late with us tonight. We continue to be stuck in the same summer-like weather pattern. That we do. Temperatures will be around 90 again tomorrow. Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey is in first with your no-wait weather forecast. Yeah, we've got a cold front that is way to our north, and that is the dividing line between fall and summer. Now, summer is still firmly entrenched across the eastern part of the country. That fall air is just kind of hanging out across parts of the Great Lakes and the Midwest, never really moving into central and eastern Kentucky. Late evening thermometers are into the upper 60s to around 70 into most areas. We roll our way into Friday, just a few minutes away from Friday, 7 o'clock. Patchy fog is out there, 60 degrees by noontime. Thermometers are already into the low 80s, and by 5 o'clock, quitting time, we say hello to the weekend. Friday evening will start out with temperatures that will be on the toasty side around the 90 degree mark. And that's a forecast that's going to hold true for at least a few more days. But when I come back in just a little bit, it looks like fall is getting ready to arrive about a week later than what your calendar says. Guys, we'll track a cool shot of air in the seven day forecast in a few minutes. It is a big get for the Lexington Police Department. Today, the chief announced the largest fentanyl bust in city history. Police say they found nearly 100 grams of the drug during a raid at William Dixon's home. Dixon is employed by the city of Lexington. As WKYT's Garrett Weimer reports, fentanyl laced in heroin is believed to be the cause of a recent spike of overdoses. He has our top story at 11. U.S. Attorney Kerry Harvey says his office has seen a disturbing trend with the growth of fentanyl on the streets. And now it's commonplace. It happens every day. Harvey says police found about 100 grams of the powerful drug at the home of William Dixon. We're told Dixon works for the Division of Water Quality, but has been on paid leave because of an on-the-job injury. This is an extremely dangerous substance. It is so potent that it's possible to uh, absorb a, a lethal dose simply by inadvertent skin contact. Investigators say it's the largest amount of pure fentanyl that Lexington police have seized, and they say it was intended for right here, the streets of Lexington. Harvey says it's an important indictment because of how much of the drug they were able to keep off the streets. If this uh, quantity of fentanyl had hit our streets, there's certainly a likelihood that there would have been overdoses, there may well have been fatalities. If convicted, Dixon faces a minimum of five years and a maximum of 40 years in federal prison. In Lexington, Garrett Weimer, WKYT. Dixon was in court today for a detention hearing. He'll be arraigned on Monday. Police and National Guard troops making their presence known on the streets of Charlotte, North Carolina tonight, hoping to prevent a third night of riots. Even still, people are marching through the streets protesting the death of a black man at the hands of police. Kenneth Craig has the latest. Protesters took to the streets of Charlotte for the third night in a row, angry over the police shooting of 43 year old Keith Scott. We got to stand up for what we believe in because we don't stand here. Our kids are going to have to stand here. As night fell, National Guard tanks rolled in and heavily armed troops patrolled on foot, gathering in a show of force determined to keep the peace. Right now, we think we're adequately resourced to uh, have a much better outcome, but ultimately, we're committed to ensuring the safety of the public. The city is currently under a state of emergency, and for the first time since these protests began, officials just set a curfew for midnight. Wednesday's violent protests left businesses damaged and looted, officers and civilians injured. One person was shot in the head and died, but it's not clear who shot him. 
Police say they are reviewing the tapes as well as the police and dash cam recordings of Scott's shooting. They showed two recordings to Scott's family, who later released a statement saying in part, they have more questions than answers, and they could not discern what Scott was holding in his hands, if anything. They also say when he was shot and killed, his hands were by his side, and he was slowly walking backward. The family is calling on police to release the tapes to the public immediately. Kenneth Craig, CBS News, Charlotte. Now, charges have been filed against a police officer who shot and killed an unarmed black man in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Prosecutors say Officer Betty Shelby reacted unreasonably when she shot Terrence Crutcher. Shelby is charged with first degree manslaughter. She told investigators she feared for her life and thought Crutcher was going to kill her. It is an honor a long time in the making. Tonight, four statues of former players were unveiled at Commonwealth, the first ever at the stadium. Nate Northington, Greg Page, Wilbur Hackett, and Houston Hogg broke the color barrier for SEC football nearly 50 years ago. Brian Milam was at the ceremony. He joins us now with our big blue coverage at 11. Brian, this is really special. It is. It's a heartwarming and touching moment as those four trailblazers who helped pave the way for the integration of the SEC. They were honored with a statue which will stand forever. The family of Greg Page was in attendance, as was Nate Northington, Wilbur Hackett, and Houston Hogg to see their likeness revealed in front of them. A beautiful statue to commemorate sacrifice for future generations of African American athletes at UK and in the SEC. Wilbur Hackett hopes it inspires others for generations to come. If these young men, whoever walks through this corridor, whoever walks past that statue, and they see that history, hopefully it can be an inspiration to them. Hopefully it can encourage them to go on and, and, and finish their dream, to live their lives, to make the most. Because I had no idea 50 years ago that this was going to happen. So if it can serve as a, a stepping stone for somebody's success, then I'm, I, I, I hope that's what happens. Just an emotional night for those gentlemen and their families, and certainly one of the greatest nights in the history of the University of Kentucky. Much more later in sports. Brian, thank you. Those statues are beautiful. In 1969, Hackett also became the first African American team captain in any sport in SEC history. A barroom brawl ended with shots fired and a scare for students at Eastern Kentucky University. It all began early this morning in downtown Richmond. Police say they were clearing a large crowd from the copper still when someone fired shots. EKU sent out a safety alert to students telling them to take cover because the gunfire was near campus. Police officers quickly searched the downtown area and made arrests at a home on South Madison Avenue. Got everything under the control before it got out of hand, so, you know. We had the help of the other two agencies with everybody working together as a team. We think we prevented something bad from happening. Police arrested three people, 23-year-old Dante Hill, 21-year-old Tyler Brand, and 21-year-old Anthony Gerald. Police say the men are not students, but police say witnesses told them the shots were fired at a group of students after the incident at the bar. New numbers out tonight about the number of crimes taking place in public schools in this state. The report from the Kentucky Center for School Safety is from the 2014-15 school year. More than 5,500 students committed more than 6,200 crimes at school. Marijuana possession is the number one violation. Assaults were up more than 50 percent. The report says that ninth graders committed the most crimes. Victory tonight for Kentucky Attorney General Andy Bashir. The Democrats sued Republican Governor Matt Bevin over his cuts to higher education. Today, the Kentucky Supreme Court sided with Bashir and ruled the governor did not have the authority to slash college budgets without authority from the legislature. This governor uh, is all about cutting the red tape, and this case is over. So I'm calling on him to cut that red tape and go ahead and immediately provide. This, these funds to our universities. They desperately need them. They can use them. And in the end, it'll help Kentucky families, whether it's the students or the faculty. Governor Bevin said he disagreed with the ruling. His office released a statement saying, quote, the attorney general clearly does not understand the severity of the pension problem, which became the nation's worst funded plan under the watch of his father's administration. $18 million will be returned to schools across the state. Well, he is a fan favorite. Tayshawn Prince starred for UK and then starred in the NBA. Quite a player. The past couple of years, he spent his summers helping athletes with their game. Monique Blair has a story that's new at 11. 
the, the cream of the crop as far as the top in the country. And of course, we had to ask former UK basketball great Tayshawn Prince what his thoughts were on the current UK basketball players. But that's not why he was in Lexington Thursday night. I felt it was, you know, something that was very special and dear to me. So in the past year, Prince has dedicated his time to working and playing alongside Special Olympics athletes. I tell people, and just like they told me, you can't, you, you know, you you're not you're not going to know how it feels until you go. And now Prince, who knows what it feels like to have a passion for the game, says he wants to continue to help these athletes live out their passion for the game. I know they look up to us, but it was a, it was a day that we could all just, you know, sit back and let them enjoy the weekend and we could do, you know, whatever we can to help them and make their experience life life, you know, life changing and I hopefully that happen. All the proceeds from this two for a cause farm to table dinner tonight will go directly to Special Olympic Kentucky athletes. Special Olympics Kentucky provides year-round sports training and competition programs for children and adults with intellectual disabilities. We're currently serving over 7,800 athletes statewide, and we provide uh, sports training and competition in over 16 sports. In Lexington. At the end of the day, it was all about having fun and making sure they have an experience of a lifetime. Monique Blair, WKYT. He was great on the court and he's great off the court. Tonight's event raised $10,000 for Special Olympics of Kentucky. Two years after she was gunned down by a stray bullet inside her apartment, three people confessed to the crime. An update to the case in 10 minutes. It's been her mission. We'll hear from a woman who helped police identify her mother as the victim of a 47-year-old murder case. Now, your hour-by-hour -hour forecast with Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey. Blue skies across the area today. Temperatures way, way up compared to what we should be seeing this time of year. But humidity levels are way, way low. Defender Radar Network has been asleep for most of sep uh, September. What's the old Green Day song? Wake me, when, uh, wake me up when September ends. I guess that's what the radars are singing across the area right now. Nothing into the Bluegrass State surrounding areas. Finally have a little something to show you with some clouds beginning to creep on into northern Kentucky out of parts of Indiana, Ohio, Illinois. Now, this is an area that is getting worked over by flooding rains. A summer pattern to the south of that, fall pattern to the north. They're kind of stuck in between. That's the battle zone. That's where they're getting pummeled by significant flash flooding over the past couple of days and more to come. Around here, 90 for an afternoon temperature tomorrow for a high. Here's a new hour-by-hour -hour forecast. We're going to roll this bad boy all the way through the upcoming weekend. What you see is what you get and what you feel as we go into your Friday. Saturday can feature at least a cloud or two out there, 85 to 90 yet again. Sunday morning, low 60s. Sunday afternoon, low and mid 80s into much of central and eastern Kentucky. Start to get in on a cold front getting close to the area by Monday. So 7 o'clock on Monday morning, there's a threat for a shower or a thunderstorm trying to fire up. Big changes, though, as we go into next week. By Monday afternoon, cold front is pushing into western Kentucky. It may have a little broken line at least of showers and thunderstorms right along and ahead of that. And it slowly moves through the area Monday into Tuesday. Look what follows that up. Cool air coming out of Canada that will be downright chilly for areas just to our north and northwest. Here's a future hour by hour temperature forecast. We're going way into the future early next week. Low 80s on Monday afternoon, just ahead of that front. That front then makes its way into the area. You can pick out exactly where this thing is. Look at that, 8 o'clock Tuesday morning, 60s, 50s. Now watch the front move through here and watch the temperatures drop. 4 o'clock Tuesday afternoon, this model thinks it is cloudy and raining and 55 degrees on Tuesday afternoon. That's just a computer model forecast. And if the rain shield is off by a few hundred miles, give or take, of course, the temperature will be off just a little bit, too. But we may struggle for a couple of days next week to get out of the upper 60s to around 70. I don't call that a struggle in my book. I call that perfection as we roll into fall, guys. We call that fall perfection, that, that's right? That's exactly right. So, for you, you know, for the folks who have the fall weather aware and you mm -hmm. haven't been able to use it yet, hang in there next week. Good deal, sir. Thank you. Well, Chris, it was a beautiful night for a cookout. Only this one in Lexington attracted several hundred guests.
A popular locally owned business throws a party every fall to thank their customers and employees. Hinkle Denmark is an award winning landscaping business based here in Lexington, started 27 years ago. Their celebration is called Live Flame, complete with fire pits and all locally produced food. With local meats, local vegetables, um, all prepared fresh, locally grown, um, and chipped in here with people that have a passion for. Eating. When we started Hinkle Denmark, we wanted to build a company that contributed back to their hometown, that grew its employees to, so they could provide for their families, and really kind of, that's what it's all about for us, and then do beautiful landscape at the same time. Well, they even had s'mores tonight, Amber, and you know me, I had a couple. Hinkle Denmark employs about 75 people. We both have a passion for eating. I like that, <laughs> yeah, I like that. That's good. <laughs> All right, good news for drivers, but walkers at EKU still have to take a detour. We have an update on the Pedway collapse in about four minutes. Keep up with the latest news on WKYT.com. Join the conversation on Twitter and become a part of the WKYT Facebook family. Three people charged in a Clark County murder case pled guilty in court today. Aaron Staley, Christopher Robinson, and Lamont Wilkerson admitted their roles in the 2014 shooting death of Amber Cottle. She died just two days before Christmas after being hit by a stray bullet that went through her ceiling from an upstairs apartment. Robinson pled guilty to murder, burglary, and assault. Staley and Wilkerson to complicity to each of those charges. A fourth person, Lillian Barnett, is also charged in the case. Her trial is set for January. Yesterday, we told you about a state police identifying a woman found murdered in Harlan County 47 years ago. DNA testing confirmed the body found along Little Shepherd Trail in 1969 was Sanja K. Blair Adams. The break in the case happened after state police were contacted by a woman believing the body may be that of her mother. Well, I hope that they can find who did it, you know. I mean, and it's been a long time. If the killer is still out there, who killed her? Yeah, they've had time to live a whole lifetime. Stipes was a year old when her mother disappeared. She says she wants to hold a funeral for her mother and give her a proper burial. Traffic is moving again tonight on a busy road on the EKU campus. Lancaster Avenue reopened at 6 tonight. It had been closed since September 9th after a dump truck hit a pedway, causing it to collapse. The road was closed until crews could shore up the pedway. The pedway is still closed to walkers. Crews continue work today on the new summit at Fritz Farm Shopping Center. Officer Don flew over the site this afternoon. The summit, complete with stores, restaurants, and apartments when it's finished. The summit was originally set to open this fall, but the opening date has now been pushed back to the spring of next year. You know, those crews love all this good weather we've oh, had yeah. lately for them. Mm -hmm. Just ahead, the cats have one more day to get ready for South Carolina. And Kentucky trying to straighten things out on the defensive side. We'll hear from DJ Elliott and the unveiling of the statue tonight. The pioneers of integration in the SEC remembered forever. That's next on WGYT. This marks the 50th anniversary since the integration of football in the Southeastern Conference, and the pioneers of integration were Kentucky Wildcats. This evening, in front of several hundred friends, family, and fans of UK football, this statue honoring the path paved by Greg Page, Nate Northington, Wilbur Hackett, and Houston Hogg. These gentlemen integrated UK football and the SEC. Tonight was certainly emotional for all involved. Oh, man. It's just like just. It just, everything in me just went, just went, you know. I mean, it was, I imagine if it wasn't a whole bunch of people looking at me and stuff, I'd probably cried. I mean, because it, it was that, it was, it was that great. I just never thought that anything like this could take place. And to see it come to fruition, uh, it's just remarkable. It really is. Uh, University of Kentucky has uh, uh, come a tremendous way. And it's good to feel that to know that uh, we were a part of that. I, I tell you, I'm most happy for my family, for my grandkids and for my parents. I'm so thankful that they're still around. <clears throat> they were a big part of the reason that, I mean, I was ready to go north to Michigan State or Indiana. And at the last hour when I had to make the decision, all of a sudden Kentucky slips in the first. It's like, a, you know, out of nowhere, my dad put his foot down and said, you going, I said, this is my decision. Said it's our decision, Kentucky. If I had to do it over again, no matter what we went through, 
I wouldn't change a thing. It would be the same thing because this university has been good to me, and, and I love the University of uh, Kentucky community and uh, athletics, and I just, I just wish them continued success. All right, the Cats will face a freshman quarterback who can run and throw when South Carolina comes into Lexington Saturday night, and the Kentucky defense has a lot of question marks. The Cats are giving up better than 500 yards per game. Mark Stoops said yesterday he has some guys who need to grow up in a hurry. Defensive coordinator D.J. Elliott admitting his unit could be lacking leaders. Could be. Yeah, it could be. You know, we lost a lot of leaders from last year, and a lot of those guys last year were... Um, very serious and very disciplined and um, our group this year we don't have as many guys like that like people are too tense and they're not talking with it like they're not um, they're so focused I mean not focused but too uptight about the game and what's going on and trying to help the next person or do this and do something that's not your job and they're not really communicating it's alarming if we had to play the game today it's alarming if we came out today with this type of approach. That, um, um, that, that's alarming. But we still have a few more days to prepare for our opponent, and we have to get it right. So the Gamecocks come in Saturday night, Commonwealth Stadium, 7.30 kick on the SEC Network. Tayshawn Prince back in town tonight helping raise money for Special Olympics Kentucky. He's played 14 seasons in the NBA. He spent last season with Carl Towns and the Timberwolves. Whether he'll play this upcoming season remains a question. I'm, I'm a free agent right now, so, uh, you know, um, believe it or not, I had a blast in Minnesota even though we didn't achieve what we wanted to. Uh, great young core group of guys who, uh, you know, just just really, really immature uh, basketball experience-wise in the NBA, but got a world of talent, willing to listen and learn. Uh, but you know, the experience on the court and everything is going to have to take its time, and you know, in, in due time, it will it will happen. And the tour championship underway at East Lake in Atlanta. Jordan Spieth holding out from the bunker at 13. He shot two under 68. He's two shots back. Paul Casey, same result to save par at 14. He also shot a 68. Dustin Johnson with a great approach shot at number 12 to set up a birdie here. Johnson with a four under par 66. He's in a three-way tie for the lead with Hideki Matsuyama and Kevin Chappell. J.B. Holmes shot a 73. So he's seven shots back after the first round. We'll be right back. Well, hello, Friday. It's here. Yay. It is here. Mm -hmm. uh, no, we're 16 minutes into Friday. Huh? Friday. Yeah, we, I almost forgot we were after midnight. At 90 over the next couple of days, change comes next week. Though. We didn't forget. <laughs> Thanks for staying up late, pal. See you tomorrow or today.